There's a lot of content to chew through, so let's get right to it. This is Chronicles of Crime, one of the most critically acclaimed games of 2018. This is Detective, a modern crime... This is Detective, a modern crime board game. Both games were released in 2018. Their ratings on Board Game Geek are nearly identical. Both employ digital elements. Both are cooperative. Both ignore assumed constraints regarding player turns, operating more like a pocket escape room than a traditional board game. Both even released a retro-themed expansion shortly later. With these two similar games in the market, I said similar games detect the City of Angels does not employ an app and offers competitive modes and is very different than these other two. I'm talking about these extremely similar games. Which one is better? It's Detective. Well, that was easy. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive. Wait, no, sorry. Sorry, I, I forgot. I need to justify these things. But first, I need to preface all of this by offering scores. Detective gets a 9. Chronicles of Crime gets an 8.5. These are really close scores. Neither game sucks. And the differences do not involve quality. It's an entirely subjective opinion based on how the games present themselves. Detective employs a website. Chronicles employs an app. Neither is optional. With Chronicles, however, it's a constant reminder. Let's look at that one first. Chronicles is supremely easy to figure out. The game lists a player count up to four, which honestly doesn't make sense. But I also question why an escape room game lists a player count up to six as well. So, I mean, there are no turns, no characters to assume. There's no scarcity of resources to split between players. As the games list a play count to maximize enjoyment, Claiming six people simply won't have as much fun as two, or that their scoring system would be thrown out of whack as you add in more people. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. You could play with as many people as you want, and with Chronicles of Crime, this is also true. Lay down the evidence board, keep the evidence character and special item card decks in order and put aside, along with the 17 location cards and four forensic boards. The common quality of every game asset is the inclusion of QR codes. Every one. The game appears generic as these resources are addressed differently depending on the case, with all of its relevant details contained within the app, a source of some criticism in the gaming community that developed a knee-jerk reaction to its inclusion. The belief, and just to stress I don't agree with this, is that app integration dooms any game to eventual obsolescence, that OS updates and a lack of long-term support will eventually render a game inoperative if mandating a digital assistant. Many of those embracing board games do so because of the need to detach, to unplug, to get away from it all, while also forgetting the irony that so many games employ digital app assistants, though admittedly, most are optional. Matches and Madness unquestionably got better with the inclusion of app integration, such a popular revision that they employed it identically later with the recent Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth. Chronicles of Crime is only the latest game to require app usage, having emerged relatively unscathed, but standing upon the corpse of other games that were not so lucky. World of Yoho employed smartphones as character units, simultaneously preventing people around the table from messing with their phones during the game. Golem Arcana employs a smart device and a light pen to assist in its miniature combat game. It remembers character abilities, available actions, and miniature positions. It also handles the random number generator as well. Though you can also roll dice. The age of digital board game hybrids is here, like it or not. Back when these early games were released, there was considerable resistance to such crossbreeds, with defiant voices proclaiming that a board game should never include or require a digital component. Thankfully, this trend is finally catching on, but games like Golem Arcana and World of Yoho came out too early to be accepted. In essence, they should have been released today, when such integration would have been more accepted. Five years ago, the mechanics were innovative, but wholly unpopular. Unfortunately for each trailblazer, there's a handful that stumbled without recognition. This has allowed Chronicles of Crime the distinction of appearing innovative while standing on the graves of failed or forgotten progenitors. Another good example? The game's VR support. 
Occasionally, the app will offer the group the option to search the scene. You can do this via a panoramic view or in 3D with mounted glasses. You can acquire a cheap set like Google Cardboard. I got this ugly thing rendered obs obsolete by my Google Daydream. When worn, the user has 40 seconds to scan the scene and dictate to others the various clues and evidence found. A totally realistic gameplay mechanic, because a detective will only have 40 seconds to walk through a crime scene. Original? Of course not. This is Mask of Mai. Pick a quirk because this game flaunts a bunch. In this game, one looks through a time-generated environment involving a pre-configured labyrinth, Easter Island heads, and strange harmless aliens jumping for attention. A player must convey this information to the rest of the group, who then construct a replication of that virtual environment with physical 3D components. Only at the end does the game tell you how the aliens move. If they escape your constructed map, meaning it matches the randomly generated one in the app, players win. Otherwise, they lose. Not weird enough for you? Did we mention you have to construct the aliens out of clay? Yes, players must build the aliens they see in the app out of clay. Well, not this clay. I had to resort to Silly Putty. This is a time mechanic right here. This clay that they included dried out. It's now rock solid. Go figure. In summary, I don't have an issue with Chronicles of Crime's reliance on app integration, but I wouldn't in any way call what it does as innovative. The same app is used to both narrate events and scan the surroundings, meaning whoever controls the app effectively runs the game. Unlike some titles where the app is used sparingly, in Chronicles it's used constantly. When you enter a location, you must scan the code to indicate its movement. After reading out the introduction, you are offered several people to talk to. To conduct interviews, scan their card. When asked them about evidence, scan that evidence. In a pinch, you can also call up a forensic contact, scan their card, then scan the evidence, rinse, and repeat. Constantly. Eventually, you'll develop a picture of the crime. Return to the chief and make your case. Of course, it's not as easy as that. Everything you do costs time. Scanning the environment, interrogating people, moving from destination to destination. Each of these costs time. The brilliant evolution of this gameplay device is that time does not advance until you commit, allowing players to talk amongst themselves for as long as they desire without running out the clock. Additionally, certain events may trigger depending on what time it is. Some individuals you'll need to question may not be present at one time, but may be available several hours later. Events evolve regardless of how long the players take to finish the game. Of course, given the limitations of the app, like Matches of Man to 2nd Edition, there are a limited number of adventures available. The core game offers five, with three linked in a mini-campaign, with three add-ons running 650 each. The Noir and Redview expansions add four more, but the added components all fit in the core box. A minimal box of that, leading to Chronicles' inexpensive price point. It all adds up to a game that is part video game, part board game, and part escape room. The only real issue is the game's reliance on the app. The belief, and just to stress I don't agree with this, is that app integration dooms any game to eventual obsolescence. No, that's not what I'm getting at. The phone with the loaded app is constantly in motion, and if one person is assigned the task of scanning codes, that one person will possess more power than the rest, creating a situation where larger player counts can create spectators more than players. The obvious solution to this is to force the phone to be passed around each time the group agrees to a new location. This then brings us to Detective. No, not that one. This one, which is significantly more complicated than Chronicles. Where Chronicles of Crime is more a hybrid attempt to welcome those not usually open to board games, Detective is, well, more a board game. From the onset, there are familiar elements. There are locations, a timetable, with each choice costing time. There is a digital uh, accompaniment. But it is not an app. and does not require a phone. The publisher portal works around this by employing a much more stable website. With a website or program, you can have at least 10 years of compatibility before being required to develop relatively easy workarounds. Apps are... more difficult. Unlike Chronicles, there is a fixed player count in Detective, with those involved assuming the roles of 1 to 5 investigators. Those you don't use are flipped over to become resources that you can tap when needed. There are also fixed case decks. Rather than rely on an app for every aspect of storytelling, Detective takes a page from Time Stories and other card-based story adventures. But thankfully, there are five stories here, just like in Chronicles. The big difference, however, is where Chronicles of Crime can take between one and two hours, Detective can take more than three. 
It's not a complaint. It's just a simple fact. The cause of the variation can be sourced to extra details placed in detective storytelling. And there's also a sense of something I like to call realism. In Detective, you are given several days to solve a crime, gaining information you need to research. Although not a perfect representation of a police procedure, Detective does acknowledge that much of your work will involve research and the piecing together of clues rather than settling on gimmicks like VR support and QR codes. Often through the game, you are given cryptograms which you can enter into Antares, a sort of intranet of data concerning the fictional cases presented in the game. Despite Antares and the cases being fictional, the game is set in the real world, thus referencing dates and people that exist in our real history. In a brilliant move, the game acknowledges this and invites players to access real-life databases in order to acquire additional background information regarding the case. Although not mandatory, this meta approach to gameplay does offer context within these fictitious cases. Unlike Chronicles, Detective's five stories are all connected, resulting in several important cards from one deck being placed in later ones. Both games involve time management, but Detective approaches it more realistically, with finite time each day with the option to go over time at the cost of stress tokens. These tokens can be accrued through other events as well, and if the number of stress tokens reaches the limit set by that case, you don't lose the game, you're just forced to resolve the case no matter how confident you are in the results. Antares is also a useful tool when entering acquired evidence and linking said evidence to potential suspects, and thus is implemented often, but the player that controls Antares need not be the alpha gamer that controls the narrative. In Chronicles, one person can wield the phone, another can rifle through the decks to remove cards, and another for taking notes, and that's pretty much it. Everyone else can talk, but that's the limit of their contribution. With Detective, you have the note-taker, the one accessing Antares, another accessing the internet, another working through the card deck, while another keeps track of the time and the boards. Detective involves more backstory, more reading, and is designed for people looking for a deeper experience in Chronicles. Take the introductory story for both games, for example. Although both tease a greater looming story, Detective accomplishes this much more successfully, with the overarching story of the latter being more engaging. Detective is also more customized. Instead of players acting as a uniform voice in Chronicles, in Detective, players assume the roles of characters with their own unique skill and backstory. Both games conclude with a final report, with a final grade depending on how accurate said report is, and taking into consideration how much time was used. With Detective, you can spend more time in early games, sacrificing a lower score in favor of more, of more evidence in later missions. Detective feels more like, well, a game. Players possess character cards, tokens, wooden markers. In the end, each game has its value. Both focus on telling stories, a group of players work together to tell, it is enthralling and a wonderful alternative to those nights when your group doesn't want to tackle the next exit. Chronicles is shorter, easier to learn, more accessible to new players, and is honestly cheaper. But it suffers from simplicity and an over-reliance on gimmicks. Detective is long, more complicated, requires a lot of reading, but can ultimately be more rewarding. Both games are good and have their place. It's like comparing a Porsche to a Ferrari. One's not that much better, but one certainly is. This is Chris from DS6 Machina. It's Porsche. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.